Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator at Art Starts in Schools. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be exploring framing. Have you ever looked at or held a picture that's in a frame? Then you've already started exploring framing. Have you ever looked through a camera or a phone through a rectangular viewing screen? Then you've already started to explore framing. Have you ever watched a movie or a play? Then you're, you've already started to explore framing. All of those things are contained within some kind of frame. So whether that was a picture, a picture screen or whether that was through your view screen on your camera or your phone, or whether that was the stage uh, between curtains or on your TV that is contained within the TV, you've already started to explore or look at things through a frame. And so what we're gonna do over the next couple of weeks is we're gonna explore art making and being creative by using um, framing techniques. And to do that, we need to start by having some kind of frame. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to make yourself something called a viewfinder. A viewfinder is just like a frame, but usually it's made out of paper. For this here, what I had was I had a piece of paper. It wasn't cut straight. It's, it was a it was from another project that I had. I think I took it out of the recycling bin. And what I did was I folded it in half. And on the spine or the folded side, from there, I ripped into the page, into the paper. And I didn't do it very cleanly. It's okay if it had a little bit of curve. It's okay if it was really, really um, jagged. But then I just slowly kept ripping, 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 ripping until when I unfolded and opened the rectangle, I had a frame. I think I made two this time. Yep, <laughs> that was for me inside. And so for the next couple of weeks, I encourage you to make yourself a viewfinder or a rectangle that you can look through 
as we explore this theme of framing. For this first week of exploring framing, what I thought we could look at is something uh, called composition. Composition is the planning of where things go within a frame. In a flat or 2D space like we're making now, the, uh, the composition will be within everything within the square. But remember how I told you you could use a camera or a stage? Well, you usually look at a TV or a camera up through this way and you look, look at it face on. And so if you are going to be designing a, um, a stage, maybe with your toys or with your figurines or even with drawings that you made to stand up, then you would be, um, you would be making a composition by looking through the side and deciding where you were going to place your, um, your toys or your dolls or even your actors within the frame of where people are going to be looking. So a stage, if you had your actors off to the side before anybody could see them on the stage, and then what side of the stage they were going to come in on. Were they going to come in on the back? Were they going to be lowered from strings onto the stage? Were they already going to be there when other uh, creatures or actors were going to come in? That's all part of composition and planning where you want people to be and where you want your audience to be looking within your frame. This week, what we're going to explore, or at least what I'm going to explore, and you can choose to follow along with me by making at the same time. You can copy me or you could um, start by following me and then try something else. Or you could just watch along and then try when you're all done watching this video. There is no one right way to explore. And so whatever feels right for you is going to be right for you. The only thing I really encourage you to do is not make anything for keeps because when we're all done exploring, we're going to clean up our space so that we can get ready to explore again for the next episode. Okay, so what, are, what tools are we going to use to explore composition? Well, I was thinking about it and I think uh, what I'm going to use to explore this week is some paper. I have a pile of paper here that I grabbed from my recycling bin. I've got some ripped paper, folded paper, some cut paper, paper that has uh, writing on it already. Some of this really thin paper that was packaging. Um, it's kind of softer paper that uh, was, um, was packed around some items when I got it in the mail. And all of that paper is going to be great for exploring. I don't need any new clean pieces of paper to explore. Do you have any paper to make along? The next thing I have on my list is mark making tools. A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So that could be markers, that could be crayons, that could be pencil crayons, that could be um, pencils, that could be uh, lipstick if you had permission. It could be mud. <laughs> Anything that makes a mark on the page is a mark making tool. And as long as you have permission to use it, then try it. This week, what I'm gonna do is, I, if I'm gonna do any mark making, I'm probably gonna stick to a marker because it's going to be easier for you to see through my video screen that you can use whatever you want or have permission to use. The next thing on my list is that viewfinder or frame or camera. So for the viewfinder, it's as easy as taking a piece of paper and then ripping a rectangle out of the center of it. You could also grab a pair of scissors and a little bit earlier, I cut out my own viewfinder. Same thing, I took a piece of paper, I folded it in half and I cut out the rectangle. And you could do that too. If you don't want to use scissors um, or you don't have um, a big enough piece of paper for what you, for the frame you want to make, 
You could also rip strips of paper from different pieces of paper. Here, there we go. And you could create your own viewfinder by taping or gluing or folding pieces of paper together and make a viewfinder like that. There is no one right way to make a viewfinder. Whatever you have on hand is going to be great. If you had some string and some pencils, you could tie your, your, your pencils together. What, what can you make? The last item, oh, sorry, before I keep going, so I said viewfinder or frame. So if you had permission uh, to take a picture frame um, and to take the glass or plastic out and just use a wooden or plastic uh, picture frame as your viewfinder for the next couple of uh, weeks, you absolutely could do that. You do have to make sure that you have permission, especially if it's not your frame. And then the last one I put there was a camera. So if you have permission or you have your own uh, mobile device, um, there's no reason why you couldn't be looking through everything through your mobile phone. I recommend that you use a piece of paper this week just to try it out. It's a really cool and um, easy thing for you to take with you. You could fold up a piece of uh, paper or a viewfinder and stick it in your pocket and take it with you wherever you go and you'd always have a viewfinder. It's one of my very favorite art making tools and over the next couple of episodes as we explore frames, I, I'll get to show you why it's one of my favorite tools. Okay, so you don't have to have all of those to make along with me. Those are some of the things that I'm going to be making with this week as we explore composition um, uh, and framing. So for this first activity, what I, what I want us to do is I want us to take piece of paper and I'm going to move my frame to the side for a second and I want us to draw three things. I'm not going to give you any other rules or any other instructions. Whatever three things that you want to draw are right. If you're not sure what to draw then you can just draw three lines or three circles or you could just color a page using three different colors. Okay, let's take a minute or two to quickly draw three different things. Okay, so I drew three different things. If you're really enjoying yourself and you want to keep drawing your three things, you can keep drawing while I'm talking. If you wanted to color in your three things, that's cool too. Just keep in mind that everything that we're making really quickly this, uh, for this activity is not for keeps. We're not making anything that we're going to keep. Um, we're just using it to try out. I thought I might add some really quick color to my uh, to my three things. There we go. That's enough. But I could keep going if I wanted. Okay. So what I decided to draw was a uh, a human, a person, and then a tree, and then a mailbox, and those were the three things that I drew. What you can do now is if you have a pair of scissors or if you have a grown-up and a sharp pair of scissors, they can cut it out for you. Or 
Now, if you are like me and you love to rip paper, and I do love to rip paper, I'm just gonna rip the three, the three objects, the three things that I drew. And I could, I could rip really close. Or I could just rip the page big. But because I told you I really love to rip paper, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of extra rips. And then I'm going to do one more around my tree. You do not have to rip paper though. You are absolutely allowed to cut or to not rip as fast as me as well. You can rip much slower. Because I rip a lot of paper, I like to go pretty fast. But uh, however fast or slow you want to rip, that is up to you. Okay. So before we grab our frame, let's make a picture using our three, uh, our three drawings, our three things that we drew. You can place them however you want in front of you. Okay. So I, yeah, no, I'm going to put these really far apart. There we go. All right. So I've placed my three items. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to place the place my frame around my three items. You can move them if you want, but at the beginning, before moving them, putting the frame down, what do you notice? The things that you drew are going to be different than the things that I drew. Your frame might be bigger or smaller than mine. The objects that you drew may have been way bigger or way smaller than mine. So the things you notice are going to be different. You can look at my drawing and see what you notice, or you could look at what you drew and see what you notice. What I notice is, is that even though I got all my objects in the frame, some of my objects are cut off. I can't see all of the tree and I can't see all of the mailbox. I can still kind of figure out that that's a tree, even though part of it is covered. But I kind of struggling to understand what this object is. If I hadn't drawn this, I might not actually know what this object is. I might actually understand it better if I was to move more of it into the frame. Yep, that's clearer now. Now I understand that in this frame, this picture, there is a person and a mailbox and a tree. By just looking at this, a story is starting to come about, like a snapshot, a moment that we paused the world to look at this picture. What a frame lets us do is really focus on that moment as something that is important. It's the act of framing something. When we take a picture and we decide to print it out and put it on a shelf, we've decided that that picture is more important than all the other pictures that we took. So there's something important about framing um, a scene or a picture. And so looking at this picture, I start to see a story of a person that's out for a walk. Maybe they've just come from the mailbox because as far as the composition or picture is concerned, they're closer to the mailbox than they are to the tree. What happens if I move the figure further away from the mailbox? The person could have come from the mailbox. And if we hadn't seen me move the character away, we just come into the scene and seen it like this, we really wouldn't know where the character or the figure had come from. Maybe they just stood up. Maybe they are walking from the tree over to the mailbox. 
they don't have a letter in their hand. So maybe they don't plan on actually going to the mailbox. But we don't really know. And so just the act of moving that character from the right of the picture to the middle of the picture makes all these questions and new possibilities happen. Let's change it again and see what happens. What do you notice? For me, now I really think that this character is probably moving in that direction. It looks like the character has probably just walked into the frame. And whether this was a TV show, or whether this was a picture, or whether this was a play, um, there's, there's a kind of sense of motion because of all this space, because all the things that this character could be doing, all the things that this character could be interacting with are on the far side of the picture. And so simply by making decisions of where to place things in a frame, by building our composition, by deciding where they go, we tell a story. What if I was to take my figure and place them up here? What happens now? Well, now it seems kind of silly, but that's, that could be fun. Maybe they can float. Maybe the, question, the big question is, what are they doing upside down? Maybe the goal of my picture is to make you laugh because this character is over there. What happens when we take everything else out of the picture and only have one item, one object? What do you notice? For me, while I'm looking, I can't look at anything but this figure. There's nothing else to really look at. They're the focus of the picture. What if I was to move the focus of this picture now, while nothing else is in frame, and I move them over to the side? What do you notice now? They're still the focus. They're still the thing that you notice because they're the only thing in the page. But it feels different, doesn't it? It feels like they're not necessarily standing because they're not in the center. They're not still. There's not this all this empty space. It feels like they're gonna they're going to actually walk out of the frame. There's a sense of motion, of movement, simply by moving the figure that was in the center over to the side. I want to try one other thing. What do you notice now? Does it feel the same as it did before? Or does it feel different? Do you notice anything? Or did it stay the same? For me, what changed was um, it's really easy to notice this character and feel like they're going to move out the side. Because before, when it was the green of the background of my drawing table, there was still something else that was happening. There was the color here that was different from the white background of the character. And so the character stood out even more, but it felt kind of incomplete. It felt like a question mark of what's going on in all of this space, or it feels like maybe it's wrong or it's missing something. I didn't add any new pictures or information to the page, but by having a background that filled my space, now I'm able to focus on this character without getting distracted by the different color that's over at the side. And the frame really makes that 
very clear that I shouldn't be looking anywhere except for this character. Try it out with your frame. Keep moving your objects around the space, around your frame. Put things in different places and see how it makes you feel. Or if it um, tells you a story. When you have placed your, your different objects, ask somebody else. Take a picture of it or invite somebody uh, to come check out your live space. If you're making along with somebody else, have them position all of their pieces and you position all of your pieces and then swap places and see what you notice. You might have intended for somebody to, intended as in you, you'd wanted them to see or to notice a certain story or picture that you were putting together. But when they came to look at it, they may not have actually gotten what you wanted them to see because of where you put them in the frame. So remember before when I had the mailbox and the tree over here at the side and the person over here, you might have wanted them to, um, to think they're going to go for a nice walk today. But because this information is here, because you decided to frame the picture, and if you were going out in real life with your camera and you decided to put this, pic this mailbox in the frame, all of a sudden somebody looking at it goes, oh, this must be important information, and their eyes are taking in all that stuff. So when we're using a camera or a viewfinder to, to look at things, it actually lets us go, well, what do we want to focus on? And so we can't move a mailbox in real life. Right now with our picture, we can because we ripped out the pieces of paper, we can move them around. But if I was to have drawn this on a bigger piece of paper, here, I'm going to use one of my scrap pieces here. I'm going to put it on a bigger piece of paper. In fact, I'm going to put it on multiple big pieces of paper. Move some of my objects around. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to add some things to my picture now that I won't be able to move. So there's a tree. Maybe there's a swing. And then I'm going to add a, uh, a sidewalk. This picture isn't for keeps, so I'm going really fast. It doesn't have to be a really great picture. That's all right. Okay, and then there's some clouds here. And then maybe there is a squirrel that's sitting right here. It's a real fast squirrel. There's their fluffy tail. Uh, maybe there's another squirrel here that's, that's running up the side of the, the tree. There you go. Uh, and then maybe there is, there's some birds here, and uh, what else do I want? Um, maybe another cloud over here. And then, you know what, maybe a couple of buildings are in the background. So here's a big window, and here's a door, and there's another door, and there's another window. There we go. Right, it doesn't have to be perfect. Right, we're just trying things real fast. There's another house real close. And there we go. Okay. So let's say that this was this is this is where we're out. So oh, what am I doing? <laughs> That's okay. Well, now my now my cloud has some circles in it. That's all right. I'm gonna do another cloud up here. That's why not. Okay. So this is the scene. This is, this is the world. This is actually what we're seeing right now. And so we can't move anything. We can't walk up to this tree and go, excuse me, tree, please move. Even in a picture, we can't go, oh, I wanted that tree over there. We'd probably have to draw the whole picture again. And so when we take our viewfinder out into the world, what we can move is our viewfinder. We can't move that tree, but we can move our viewfinder so that we don't put the tree in the picture. 
we could move our viewfinder so that it is vertical and not horizontal. And so if we don't want that tree in the picture, we can make that choice by moving our frame around. But if we do have the tree in the picture and we're not thinking about it before we take the picture and we show this to somebody and maybe we, what we wanted them to pay attention to was the squirrel, with the, with the swing in the center of the picture and this tree here, they might think that what you wanted to pay attention to was the swing because we tend to look at the center, at the, at the focus of the picture. And so even though you wanted people to be paying attention to the squirrels, they might not pay attention to that right away. And so what we learn by using our viewfinder and trying out different things is to see how we can position our frame to get our eyes to pay attention to certain things by moving them off to the side, by having them um, cropped so that not all of it is in the frame, by changing the orientation or direction of our frame, by blocking things out completely. And that's what I meant by taking our frame with us wherever we go. Having um, the little paper picture frame that you can pull out and if you are, maybe sometime you are waiting at school for somebody to come out and join you at recess, you could pull out your frame and you could look around the schoolyard or the block or the mall or on a nature walk. See what you notice while you look through your frame. See what happens when you don't put things in the picture and what you do focus on when you're focusing only in this smaller rectangle. I'm going to bring these pictures back in. Okay, that's where the tree is going to be. That's where the mailbox is going to be. And that's where my person is going to be. And there we go. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to rip out just a little bit more paper out of my person figure here. Oh, I ripped off some of their ear. That's all right. Just for fun. Just not for keeps. Sometimes it's faster to use scissors. Sometimes it's faster to rip. There we go. Okay. Bring my person back into the frame. And there we go. So now we have all this noise. Now we have all these other details in the picture. Are you still focused on the character? Are you more focused on some objects more than others? What if you were to move the frame now? What if you had the character now in the center with all of this stuff in the background? Does your eye still go to the same place? Are you still having the same story in your head as what you had when you only had the three objects? This is just one way to explore composition. And I encourage you to keep trying, keep adding more things to your composition, take them away and see what you notice. If you're making with other people, other grown-ups, siblings, friends, you can swap your objects. So maybe somebody else made a bunch of birds or somebody else made a bunch of colors. They didn't actually do um, any figures. Maybe instead they just had a whole bunch of ripped shapes. You could trade back and forth and see what happens and see what happens when you add their figures and shapes and objects to your picture. And you can lend your pieces to them and mix and match, or you can make a composition together. What do you notice? Thanks so much for exploring framing with me and composition. I'm going to leave my camera running and I'm gonna put all the pieces that I made this week into a pile so that I can clean them up 
because one of the rules of explorers is to clean up when we're all done so we can respect our space and start making again the following week. If you made something fun and cool that you want to share with us, take a picture. Share it with us on our social media. We'd love to see it on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. You can watch more videos from Art Starts Explorers on our YouTube, on our Facebook, or on artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. I look forward to making with you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.